All right, welcome back to the usually slasher free zone. Today we're diving into the twisted, darkly humorous world of Blood Mountain Massacre with the film's co creators, uh, Bot Place and Darby Dust, from a cast with names like Lori, Alice, and Nancy, paying homage, I think, to horror's greatest final gross, to a script packed with social commentary. Blood Mountain Massacre blends horror, human, and satire in a fresh and chilling way. If you're ready to experience the carnage, you can find Blood Mountain Massacre on Prime Video, Tubi, Voodoo, and Vimeo, and connect with the film's creators on Instagram at the Blood Mountain Massacre. And for more information and some really awesome and fun behind-the-scenes content, visit uh, BloodMountainMassacre.com. So grab your popcorn and let's say hello to the uh, film's creators. How are you guys? Hey, doing great, doing excellent. Thanks. How are you? I'm great. I was just telling you guys how fun this movie is, and it truly is, and I'm not just saying that, uh, I thought this movie was first and foremost entertaining, which is important, right? Obviously you want to make a movie that's entertaining, but let me tell you, this, this thing was just funny in a good way. You know, like you get movies that are like, you laugh at it because it's bad, and this is funny because it's genuinely, you know, comedic stuff in here, but eventually, and I won't spoil too much, people need to see this movie, it gets, you know, uh, the best way, the best way, or rather, in my in my head, I, I kept thinking, if you're fans of Anchorman, uh, after a big fight, you know, they're taking a shot of scotch or whatever, and it's like, well, that escalated quickly. That's how I felt eventually as this movie went along. And I don't want to say any more than that, but uh, yeah, awesome. Thanks, you guys, for being here. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. So my first question for you guys, um, without giving too much away, this is a slasher. How did you guys come to, or what was your process for selecting? I think, you know, every slasher needs a mask or something that's uh, iconic and recognizable. How did you guys select what you selected for this guy's character uh, in terms of both of his mask, but also his weapon of choice? Did you guys put a lot of thought into that? Uh, to me, it seems like you guys are obviously fans of the genre. So how did you guys select that? You know, at first, when we first, got things going we made a trailer to try to get some money and in that trailer he wasn't wearing a mask and i was just like he feels too human he needs we got to cover his face and then uh, there was a lot of deliberation on okay well what is it gonna be like what do we want and a pig mask <coughs> excuse me a pig just feels you know he's a swine it just kind of connected with the character's backstory a lot i i just felt like it was the best because we had also discussed uh like a bat maybe but you know with something with a snout something that was you know um you know that just felt kind of swinish you know swinish. <laughs> and what about the weapon of choice did, did you guys put a lot of thought into that well i just you know he kills people with a bunch of different things you, you know yeah, true, um, you're right the the machete though just feels the most like iconic slasher you know because a lot of this movie is paying homage to our love of 80s horror and b movie horror you know and just a slasher in my mind just boom machete you know uh but once again i mean he kills people with a bunch of different things he does in a bunch of different ways. Yeah, I don't want to give it to. I don't. I. I. Uh, I guess I identified him, or rather, the the machete that he picks up. I think it's probably the first weapon that he uses, and I just it sort of naturally came about as it. I felt like that was yeah. his weapon. You know, eventually, you know, he gets into other circumstances, and um, it's not feasible to use his weapon of choice. But he still has to kill. So That's you know, he, uh, he does what he's doing. Um, I don't know the question. So I don't know if this is intentional, but there are some scenes in this film that felt a little bit like, I'm a huge fan of obviously horror and comedy stuff, but I felt a little bit like The Office, sort of arts and recs uh, <laughs> style. In some of these scenes, is that intentional? Or are you guys fans um, of that too? Or You know, I, I done, I've i seen a couple episodes of those shows. They certainly weren't a direct influence, but uh, you know, I'm a comedian. There were a lot of stand-up comedians in the cast of it and so just that in certain scenes there was a comfortability to kind of uh play off of each other and i think that parks and rec and the office they do that a lot so i could see you know why there might be a similarity but i personally 
I've seen very little of either one of those shows. Ah, okay. Well, let me tell you, it definitely it feels like, uh, I mean, you just said that, but it feels like a little bit of an influence. It was fun. Again, uh, hey, I, I love those shows. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, I love those shows. And uh, again, I, uh, I I was laughing from very early on and it never really stopped in, in a good way. But um, mm, great. Uh, I have a follow <laughs> I have a follow up for you in terms of like uh, the cast playing off each other. You direct this film, but you also you also play character. You're Jay. You're Jay in this movie. That's How right. is that? How is it uh, being a character in a movie that you helped create? I know that you already said that we talked about this a little bit earlier uh, in your behind the scenes footage, which, by the way, everybody should check out on the website. Um, you talk about if you're not in front of the camera, you're behind it. You're literally doing this yourself. Like, yeah. You are in the movie and you play Jay. How is that? Uh, does that make it harder for you, easier for you, or is it just the same because everybody's doing it? Well, you know, that's, I, that's an interesting question because I think that it definitely adds a level of difficulty to it. I think one of the biggest challenges I found of playing a character in it as well was that you know, the people I would be playing against would really have their lines memorized and be able to really rehearse the scene and everything. And so I felt like an extra pressure being a co-writer of it and directing it. They're like, I got to know my lines for sure. You know, uh, there was a lot of playing off of each other, but in particular in the hot tub scene, you know, there was so much going on. There's so much information we're trying to explain in that scene and also just technically setting that up. There's a lot going on. And that scene in particular, I found like I, there were a couple of times where I missed my cue to say my thing, you know, and everyone's yeah. kind of pissed because the hot tub is freezing cold. And um, right. that was my big challenge. And then, you know, he played the bartender as well. And me and him have a bit of a repertoire is repertoire of the band. What, what did you oh, think? Darby, you're the bartender. I didn't recognize that. Yeah. Tattooer is easy. That's what I do for a living. Yeah. And now that I hear your voice, I I, I, I can hear your, your your dialogue and your interaction. You guys had an interaction there. The, the convenience I had with being the bartender is the guy that's playing the, uh, the music promoter, the venue promoter, is a guy right. I played in uh, bands with for years. Um, so he and I playing off of each other is like second nature. So that that was actually very easy for me. Um, I spend very little time in front of the camera versus a lot of time with us shuffling cameras around amongst each other to make things happen. So uh, I didn't necessarily have nearly as much of a challenge as Bob would have had. Got it. Got it. And, uh, you know, I mentioned this in the introduction, but in terms of dialogue, too, there's this particular line, and I, I want to read that because I just thought it, was, it just really stood out. There's one more, um, but in particular, this one. Uh oh, and my camera must have stopped. Oh, hold on a second. Let me pause this one. Okay, so in terms of dialogue, there's this, there's this line that I found really interesting, and this, this touches on the social commentary. And it's, uh, it's really interesting. It's funny, but obviously important. It's true. But uh, it goes along the lines of um, uh, you have Dr. Loomis, by the way, obviously another homage to, to, to characters in the movie. Uh, talking to a police officer, and the police officer said, you can't just shoot on people, uh, which is obviously, you know, a huge issue with police officers in America. I mean, I'm not saying everybody, but certainly people getting shot unarmed when there shouldn't be, a lot of gun violence. But um, I don't think I've ever really seen or heard lines that, uh, that reflect socially in a horror movie before. Maybe I, maybe I have and maybe I haven't, but it just really stood out because it was the... I didn't expect it, and it was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we had a lot of fun with that kind of stuff. You know? Totally. Um, the, the speech that gun control mom gives, you know, we, we're trying to, like, really lean into this idea of, like, how exaggerative, you know, uh, that doing uh, advocacy can be. And we're also, for us, nothing is off the table. Like, right. we feel like... If you can't if you can't make fun of one thing, then you're not allowed to make fun of anything. So it's make fun of everything. That's right. So uh, no joke, no jab. Um, I don't think that we have a political bias that we're necessarily pushing or an agenda in the, in the film. I think our point is to just literally jab at everybody, and it's all right. in good fun, and we just want people to laugh. Right. You know. So if you're taking yourself too seriously, then this probably is not the right. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah you know that's the second one and i was waiting for for a punchline at some point there but no that was just straight up you know presentation on gun violence and 
you know, talking about the victims of violence and every one of the victims that they were showing, you know, were kids and, you know, obviously reflects reality. You know, and, uh, all and of those pictures are all of us. Yeah. Um, wow, yeah, really? These are kid photos. The first one's me. The second one is him and his brother. You Interesting. Know, uh, the the cast you see in the film, those, those are, are all their there. childhood photos. That's so right. this is that was pictures of the cast when they were kids. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. And speaking of the cast again, I mentioned Dr. Loomis. I caught Freddie in there. At first, obviously the very the, the first one was very obvious, Dr. Loomis. Freddie, I was like, okay, that definitely has to be a reference. Um, but then you also have Lori, Alice, and Nancy. Obviously, all final girls, right? As you said, this is in the match the horror movie. So this is exactly what these are, right? So these yep. were always written to this, uh, always written to the film, and you always want to call these characters this, or is this just something that came about later it's like why don't we just call them final girl names yeah no no that was intentional from jump you know yeah. we really uh the premise of all of this kind of started with us having a conversation uh, loosely about like if we were going to make a slasher film what are all the things you have to have and um that just kept expanding outward so naming the characters after the final girls and and the guys are all named after killers that are from you know, Danny is Candyman, Jay is Jason. Um, Manimal was something we made up differently just for him. Right. But obviously, Freddy is Nightmare. Yeah. Um, uh, all of that was very intentional. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely seems like obvious. I, I, actually, you know what's interesting? I didn't catch it at first. I had Dr. Loomis, I caught immediately, but it took right. me a, it took me a second. Um, to capture everybody else, uh, you know, being uh, homages in terms of names for characters. But uh, I, I want to talk about another thing here, uh, which is another huge theme in the movie, obviously, which is music. Uh, right. I was watching the behind the footage stuff and you guys are both in bands, right? You guys are in each other's bands, I think you said in the interview. No, the music uh, here is... Yeah, we never played together, but um, uh, our, our band bands played, played together. together. Yeah. That's what I, I meant to say, yeah. Swain Sinatra, he was in a band, Whiskey Shit Vomit, that yeah. played together all the time. And the music is used um, in the movie, too. Um, Swain Sinatra's music is playing in the background of a lot of the stuff that's in the venue. Uh, a whiskey song is playing in the background at the tattoo shop. So we also constructed the rest of the soundtrack out of other bands that are current local bands, like Chew mm -hmm. is one of them. Uh, Indigo Method was one of them. Our friends in um, Sonic Spectrum, uh, which that guy is the guy in the movie that is the sound guy. Yeah. Um, so we oh, reached okay. to a lot of our friends that were musicians <laughs> that we had played with and then that were still currently musicians and gathered a lot of their music to use as the music that's in the background. When you said sound guy, I immediately went, my brain went to the sound guy refusing to do something in the movie. For, uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Much fun. And that's uh, a, uh, because, like, uh, I think you got to be a musician to really understand that guy yeah and i can't tell <laughs> people that it's it's literally 50 50. 100 percent. like people that just do not understand that whole gag at all including the executive producer does not understand it including like other people that were actors in the film that don't understand it you know we've had uh the screenings that we've had for it it gets a laugh from those people and the uh one of the executive producers came up to me after the premiere and it got a big laugh and he was like, I still don't get the joke. And I'm like, but you see, I kept but, it in. We kept that fucking joke. thing yeah. in, man. Uh, yeah, it was funny. Yeah, it was just such a funny scene. And it was, yeah. it was really well done. And it was just hilarious. The sound guy, you know, the sound guy being a sound guy was just really, really funny. Yeah. Everything in, in this movie uh, is really, really funny. But I want to keep uh, on in the topic and the subject of music. I want to say the music is excellent. Uh, the band names are excellent. Uh, uh, the abortions, and you know, I think, uh, Dick Hammer, Dick Hammer, Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you guys come up with these names as the foremost? And and the songs, by the way, Post Nut Twenty, like it, it's really catchy. Yeah, it really I is. <laughs> I love really that catchy. song. It plays three times in the film. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I, I think that's why I liked it so much. Like this is, yeah. like, this is getting stuck. Like I hear it in my head now. So who wrote that? Did you guys write that or? Good. <clears throat> um. The, the songs were written with the intention of trying to, to push an agenda for each band. You know, we right. wanted Dick Hammer, like, if you kind of look at slasher films, and this is kind of a part of our initial conversation about slasher films, which is that essentially they're puritanical. You know, if you smoke, if you drink, if you fuck, you die. Right. So the we wanted to make 
the other thing is that you're there are people that that die in a horror film where it's supposed to hurt you a little bit and then there's some people that die in the horror film like yeah that guy should have died you yeah know? and right. we wanted the dick hammer guys to be like the worst guys the douchiest right. kind of guys so exactly that, like, if they die you don't feel like it's like these guys suck but not only you know? that but we like you said we didn't want you to feel sympathy i think uh sometimes there's that good feeling sometimes it's just about like oh that guy you know sometimes the slasher's the hero and you're just waiting yeah. for the kill you know and so you got to throw up a couple pawns out there i mean yeah. one of the things we said was everyone has to die like a bitch every guy every has guy to, right, every guy right. Has to die like but in in yeah. a sense everyone ends up yeah. like that but you know like manimal the, the all of them it just yeah. had to be oh. you know and so that pertaining into too. the name it's like we just wanted the douchiest name and for a while we were just joking about dick hammer like well you know sort of we'll call it that tentatively until we come up with what the real name is <laughs> and we just right. kept saying it was like nah man eventually it's got to be dick hammer right, right. Um, we found out later and I, and I love this fact oh yeah is that the original marvel man his name is dick hammer you're uh, really yeah the, the marvel man from the <laughs> 70s the guy that like you know is on all of the the ads you know the cowboy yeah. guy his name oh. is dick we didn't find that out until later but right cherry on top yeah you know? right that's, that's interesting um there's one more band name not a b main band name but in, again just another one of the most hilarious things uh heaven couldn't find a god the same way that grass knows where it grows it's the name <laughs> of a band and and the, and, the, and the lead singer of the band was this is hilarious another hilarious scene but that name what what well okay so that name in particular i mean it was something ridiculous in the script but the actor that did that is this comic that's hilarious and we yeah, felt very comfortable with him improvising so that yeah. was actually you know multiple takes, multiple takes yeah. cut together to make that ridiculous name you know obviously leaning in on the satire of the band that takes themselves way too seriously but suck mm -hmm. yeah, you know i think I think the original name for the band was like something like Heaven's Gate. Yeah. Like, uh, survival. Uh, yeah, okay. right. But we took multiple yeah. takes with Patrick and we just kind of let Patrick go. And yeah. uh, Patrick's a very, he very talented guy. <laughs> and his brain just took him to that place. And just he like, was yeah, funny. He was that. funny. Yeah. You know, but I definitely wanted to see more of the singer that he replaced in that band. And, um, very interesting yeah. happen, thing happened there, and I won't uh, say what happened, but uh, something very interesting happened. You need to watch this film and find out what happened to the former singer of Heaven Couldn't Find a God the same way that grass knows where it grows. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that you know that. I believe like, that. I, I, was, I, I, that to you. Uh, I had to pause this movie so much. It's just It, it was just like laugh out loud. Hilarious. It really oh, man, is I a really entertaining it. thing. Um, to watch and you know I, I don't know if in my introduction I'm not a huge fan of slashers I love slashers when when you do the things that you did to the slasher genre which is you know you, you you're paying a mods to it but you're also making it it, it sucks fun you know yeah. these characters are really interesting um for example one of my favorite characters actually probably my favorite character is actually Pam oh uh, yeah you you take this you know uh, with could have potentially been just another trope character and just you know died it. and then suddenly she's like uh-uh and she just turns into this badass character oh god i'm spoiling too much um but she was so fun to watch you oh, know yeah. she's like uh-uh every anytime a, a situation where when you're the audience watching a movie at home you're like you want to you think you would be this character you're like ah if i was in this movie this is what i would well, that's pam in this movie you know she's oh, very yeah. much straightforward i'm gonna i'm gonna handle business yeah. And did you guys intentionally the, always have Pam that way, or did, or did that turn like, into yeah, a I mean, character? We modeled, we modeled Pam after Pam Greer. Right. I mean, I was gonna say Pam Greer, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that is 100% yeah. intentional. Now, right. the, there is a parallel though, still into the slasher genre, because Pam is one of the characters in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and so that name translates. But it was always yeah. Pam Greer, though. You know, I mean, In our minds. I yeah, mean, that was, we were definitely paying homage to her. And that's all. Mm, I, that, you know, in the film, she's the only one that's that that's never not winning. You know, every time right. she comes up against totally. the kid, every time it comes up against her having to, to to argue with someone or whatever, it's 
we wanted her to be like the strong female lead right know? she was totally she totally was uh I, I was gonna say oh my god i lost my train of thought i had such a i had a question uh about pan um oh yeah yeah and behind the scenes footage uh the actress i don't know her name i'm sorry if she's watching Angela. Angela. She's she's watching um uh, she talks about some of the scenes that happened in there and, and you know, she obviously uh, attacked some of the killers and how funny that was because, you know, she's like, oh, you know, he was so nice. He's such a nice man. I didn't want to do this. <laughs> the, the movie is great. The, the behind the scenes stuff is just as good. So uh, you need to watch this. Everybody needs to watch this. Okay. I want to I wanna talk briefly about, mm, in my honest opinion, in home. this is not just a slasher though. There are religious elements to this movie. And as much as I've said about how fun this was, I mentioned earlier that, you know, situation gets serious really fast. And uh, it, 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 I don't even, I don't know when it, it turned serious. But I, I went from, you know, like laughing out loud to like, oh shit. Yeah. Uh, and that also very oh, intense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We wanted, uh, you know, a movie that shifts gears real fast like that is fun. And we knew that we wanted to take it to the extreme. And we wanted to guide you down this path of like just laughs and everything's fun and then just in a moment sort of switch gears into something totally you know intense like as intense as we could make it yeah that shit escalated real quick absolutely uh it it went i don't know when it happened um I have yeah, a good idea when it happened. We, we know exactly when it happened. <laughs> you know when it happened? I was like, I guess I was just so into, um, yeah. again, it, you, I don't know, it just kept me on my toes, I suppose. I don't know when it happened. And eventually I'm like, oh, I stopped laughing like five minutes ago. <laughs> now I'm just like intently watching because this is like serious business now. And it doesn't just turn into a serious business, like, I don't say serious, serious horror stuff and horror themes explored, but also, you know, there's a huge twist in there too, so. Uh, I don't want to give anything away because you need to watch this movie. Um, but yeah, really, really fun. Uh, I I quite enjoyed this ride. It never felt long either. Like, you know, sometimes movies, they, I feel like sometimes I've seen movies and it's like, oh, God, just end this already, please. But no, I, I kept wanting more and it ends really well. Well, I really appreciate that, yeah. And there is also some uh, extra... Uh, if uh, if I, I I'm gonna spoil this a little bit, but stick around during the credits because there's stuff on there in there as well. So uh, it, it's interesting stuff there as well. Um, I, don't know, I think I covered the entire movie here. Without I don't want to spoil anything. I usually like to talk about uh, you know scenes in the movie, but maybe we can have you guys back and you can talk about more in depth. Uh, you know, once the movie is sent out because it's just really released this year, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. About eight weeks ago. Yeah, so yeah something like that. Yeah. Oh, we're we're oh, oh. promoting it all you know it's fresh yeah. it's fresh it just hit to be like it's uh over the last eight weeks it's been coming out on various platforms and it hit to be on the 6th of october because yeah. that's when it was like fully released on everything, everything was the 6th of october i mean it hit to be but it also hit like 10 other platforms yeah cw uh, yeah. It's, it's on a lot of <clears> stuff <throat> yeah i caught it on prime video uh, you're right, it's on Tubi, it's on Voodoo, and it's on Vimeo, so, absolutely. Man, what an honor to talk to you guys, and what a, what a great film you guys put together. Really, really, really fun stuff, honestly. Excellent, yeah, thank you really, so much. We really appreciate you having us, for sure. Absolutely. Totally, totally, totally. Um, tell us again where we can find this movie, where can people connect with you? I just mentioned Blood Mountain Massacre. Uh, dot com and obviously you guys are at the Blood Mountain Massacre on Instagram. But you guys have personal accounts that you share, or, or are those the only two that you? Have? Yeah, I mean you can yeah. easily find our personal accounts through our names or through the Blood yeah. Mountain Instagram. There's a YouTube and a Twitter and a Facebook, all for Blood Mountain. There's different content on all of them, but for the most part, all of the content is on all of them. Um, each day we're releasing different stuff uh, that are behind the scenes things, things that are interviews with the the cast. Um, the music we made music videos for both of the songs for both of the bands. They're on all yeah. the platforms. Uh, oh, really? There's music videos for those now. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I need to see that. I, I didn't catch that, but I definitely need to go see um, myself on uh, the yeah, you can find them on the Instagram uh, or uh, on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. Hey, one last thing. One, yeah. one last thing that I caught in the behind the scenes stuff. Um, tell me about the powdered milk uh, fun that you guys had filming. Sure. Oh, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> it looked like fun. Yeah, uh, well, you know. I didn't have to do any, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. You didn't do any of that. Oh, not have to do it. It's good. Well, you know, we wanted to have there to be like this hard party element to it. Obviously, we, we there was a lot of cocaine in the movie. But what? it was going to be like, what, what are we going to use for that? And uh, I had made another film before that also had a decent amount of cocaine usage portrayed in it. And we used dried powdered milk because it looks right. It cuts up and it, it just for camera looks right. And also will just like absorb into your body. It doesn't burn your nose or anything like that. Not going to get you high. Not going to get you high. It's, it's just milk. And I didn't, I, my memory of it was that, yeah, it's just milk. It's not that big of a deal. And then I did so much of it because we did so many takes. Uh, in the bathroom between me and John, uh, you know, Jay and Danny, those characters, that it just, it got away from me. It was pretty disgusting. It just gagged me. My, it, it, you know, I just threw up right my man, there. My man came this far away from kissing the back of a urinal. <laughs> and that bathroom, uh, we didn't decorate it to look disgusting. It no, was. That was a 100% genuine bathroom. That's right. Dive and, bar bathroom. And, uh, yeah, it was gross, but I will say it looks great, and I li and also you can get a ton of powdered milk, so you know. <laughs> Lot cheaper. Than it's funny. Yeah, it was funny, and two of the funniest scenes. I like the whole thing is funny, but you know, just up top of my head, a couple of scenes that involve you actually. You're in these scenes where you just bring out a lot of this uh, cocaine, and uh, well, people need to watch it. I don't want to spoil it, but it, it was funny. It was play, so I was just wondering about that. And again. Uh, a lot more of the behind-the-scenes stuff at BloodMountainMassacre.com. It's like a 23-minute video, but it was fun. It was fun, too. So I think it's a must. It's like a companion thing that you need to watch when you watch, after you watch the movie because it was fun. I like it looks like you guys are having fun. That's how I would like people to view that. I feel like watch them both, you know. Yeah. You really I, do. You really do. Yeah. I want to do, a, a, you know, a, a commentary version of the film where we go oh, through it like yeah. that. Oh my um, God. Here's what we need to do. Here's, I'm gonna I'm going to commit you guys to coming back on the show and doing a commentary as we watch it. I love that. I'd oh, love yeah, that. I would love to do that. A hundred percent. Yeah, that would be cool. I love hearing. You know, I really want to talk about like why this is this way in this scene, but I don't want to do it right now because it just released, and I, I really feel like people need to watch it. So maybe after Halloween or whenever you guys have an opportunity, you guys can come back and we can you know, dissect the movie scene by scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love, love to. That. that would be fun. That would be super cool. Okay, uh, bloodmountainmassacre.com. Again, you can find the movie on Prime Video, Tubi, Voodoo, Voodoo, not Video, <laughs> and on Instagram at The Blood Mountain Massacre. Guys, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you really very much. You. What an awesome movie. You need to watch this movie, and thank you guys for watching another exciting episode of Victoria Show.